Hey guys, A Canuck here for No Way In Team, your number one source for awesome, and welcome to our first impressions video of Crisis 3. Say hi, a -bomb. Hey guys, how you doing? We're very excited. It's It's been a while since we've had a new game outside of the Call of Duty universe that we're actually very excited about. And Boom! Snipe! Kaboom! That was, uh, that was Canuck's first shot in Crisis 3, so I have to give him some props for that. Um, yeah, just very briefly, uh, the game is a lot of fun. Uh, you know, take it for what it's worth. It's a sci-fi shooter, so if you're not into sci-fi shooters, you know, it may not be your your uh, your cup of tea, but definitely give it a spin, even if you're not into them. Yeah, we just wanted to kind of go over our first, just kind of feeling of the game. And I will tell you for one thing, walking into this first round and being able to snipe somebody like that without understanding the mechanics good call crytech way to go on the mechanics of an fps shooter you don't have to reinvent the wheel when you do these things i can't tell you how many times i've taken on another shooter and they're like oh we're gonna be different and the way we're gonna be different is we're not gonna allow you to change the button configuration and drive people insane so uh I, this was also my first round with my new scuff controller which was awesome <laughs> a lot of fun although i have to put a little asterisk saying i hate scuff because we ordered scuff controllers together and mine didn't arrive in the shipment so uh scuff if you're listening which i'm sure you're not get it right send me my damn controller oh i have mine so i was <laughs> it's good <laughs> anyways guys back to the gameplay mechanics the best thing about uh crisis 3 in my mind is the fluid motion and uh, the amazing frames per second it seems to be experiencing as you play. 100% mm -hmm. agree. It just looks uh, smooth. I, I don't have these moments where, uh, I mean, mind you, there's, I didn't have any lag problems, which is really nice to see. Mm -hmm. Especially <coughs> on a new release. Black Ops 2. Um, <laughs> so, again, if, you, if you're watching the gameplay here, you'll notice that when I'm jumping or doing anything crazy, that fluid motion just continues on. And uh, there's some nice touches here. I like the HUD. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's, you know, they do it a little bit differently. It, there's some oddities with it, but I like the way they've, again, with the sci-fi setting, you've got these cryo suits, you've got the helmets, uh, and the way the way you see the HUD is obviously the intention is that it's supposed to be, you know, they want it to be a little more... Uh, uh, what's the word? I can't from the helmet it. perspective. Yeah, that's exactly. What it is. So uh, there's, there's the, uh, whatever. I'll think of it later, and I'll, <laughs> I'll just throw it in there randomly. Now, this game is not without its faults. Uh, I will say that uh, there's definitely moments where I feel immersive. Like... That's the word, immersive. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's just a little bit too much crap on the screen sometimes for my liking. Not when you're playing. I'm talking about the UI in general, mm -hmm. as far as uh, picking classes and things. There's just sometimes like okay. This whole thing of when Call of Duty started the mini challenges in order to gain more XP, every game was like, I'm adding that. And it's actually been added quite terribly in almost every other game that they try to put it in. I don't mind earning extra any extra XP, but if you go back to the title screen and you're paying attention to all these little mechanics, you'll be like, hey, get this crap off the screen. Let me see my character. Let me see my <laughs> customizations. But for the most part, you can edit your weapons pretty easily in this. And uh, once you're doing that, even before you get into the game, I start judging a game by how they put that together. The way the user interface is, it's a, it's a big part of the experience, right? Far Cry butchered it oh, yeah, completely. And and uh, and it's always it always comes down to this. If the gameplay itself is good, which it clearly is here, you can forgive some, you know, minor mistakes with the uh, with the UI, but when it's bad, oh boy, you're setting yourself up for you're setting yourself up for difficulty with anyone playing playing your game for the first time. If the UI is bad and then you get into the gameplay and it's mediocre, you've got a really really negative view of the game right out of the box and uh, the, at least this they avoid any major faux pas with the UI and again getting back to how smooth the game uh, plays you know outside of the Call of Duty universe on sh on consoles pardon me uh, shooters tend to have this choppiness and this like irritating judder uh, whereas in this game it's just it's smooth it's crisp and it's fast and that's so important especially considering the way the character your character uh, navigates around the map it's supposed to feel fast and fluid and if you don't have the if the visual representation isn't fast and fluid it takes away from the gameplay so it's nice that they've got that in there yeah and i won't lie to you guys i'm a multiplayer kind of only type of guy uh if this game has got good multiplayer i will invest entire hours and hours of gameplay in it because i like the human element i'm not a big fan of single player although there's some exceptions to that i i have played the entire uncharted series i just I like it when there is a human element on the other side of that that Absolutely. microphone, where where you know it's human versus human, who's got the best skills. Yeah, it's all, and it, most guys are that way. It's all, it's about that competitive aspect, right? Uh, and here, I'll just point out the fact 
um, even though that gunfight was lost. <laughs> I do enjoy the fact that this game uh, places emphasis and importance on aiming down sights. I have hated, in, in the recent years, ADS has become the standard for first-person shooters. You don't design a game without it, and you don't. Uh, no games are getting released without it. So I hate it when ADS isn't a distinct you know, advantage over somebody who's simply hip-firing like a complete noob. And uh, like we've seen in you know kill zone titles in the past, um, we haven't seen it so much outside of outside of the sci-fi uh, genre in shooters. Um, but the fact remains that it has to be there and it has to work well in order for again, it's about familiarity. You don't have to reinvent the wheel, like Canuck was saying earlier, and that's with every gameplay mechanic in first-person shooters. Part of the reason why it has such a huge following is because it's got this inherent familiarity, and it's you know obviously we want to see some changes and we want to see some improvements. But when it comes to the core gameplay mechanics, what's worked in the past will continue to work in the future. So don't change it. Stick with what works and look to enhance things that haven't worked well in the past. Yeah, and I think me and you both can agree, A-Bomb, that the biggest difference between this game and the previous games that have come out was there was no release window like Rush. Yep. They, didn't, they didn't just hand over some crap game where they knew full well that things were broken, but they pushed it out to beat another title. Mm -hmm. And yeah. <clears throat> <coughs> Battlefield, <coughs> Call of Duty, Ugh, it's never happened before. And anybody that says, how can you say that about Battlefield? It's now fluid and there's less problems. I don't care. It shouldn't take nope. you six months to polish a game. No. So yes, the games routinely get pushed back, um, but they, you should appreciate the fact that they've identified Suicide. that they need <laughs> to do that for quality. Mm -hmm. 100%. And people rage about delays all the time, but you know what? I'd much rather the quality be there. Yep. So, And you can feel it. I felt it in the first round of playing this game. I didn't have to search for reasons why I liked it. Absolutely. And that, like looking back at Far Cry 3, we were both we were both expecting good things. At least, you know, we wanted we were expecting a fun multiplayer experience and it was so broken out of the box that it, it the shelf life's done. It's gone. I think we yeah, we both talked that game we've now moved into this and we're very pleasantly surprised by the quality of the game uh that crisis 3 that, that crytek has released um and you know looking back on it again yeah battlefield 3 they may have fixed a lot of those issues but the fact remains that they they took money out of gamers pockets with their pre-order with the pre-orders and uh they didn't do a good job of paying us back i gotta say they did not get on things fast enough and they didn't fix things fast enough for for anyone that pre-ordered it to feel like they got their money's worth yeah, and although this is uh, an EA title, uh, you can just feel the non-diceness to this title. <laughs> the, the fact that the mics work off the bat, and there's wow. no BS yep. about it. Well, the, the PS3 couldn't handle it because of the memory. Oh, and that I'm was after sorry. denying that there was even an <laughs> issue for weeks, months. And don't listen to the other reviews. I've read a lot of reviews where they said the graphics weren't impressive enough. I'm like, Come on, what are you guys expecting? Yep. Yes, Crytek said that this was going to be the next gen console on the current gen console. <laughs> but let's be honest, it can do it can only do what it can. Yep. Um, this looks amazing on the PC, by the way, if you get a chance to take a look. But I'm a PC, I'm a, I'm a uh, PlayStation player through and through um but you can't knock the the title i mean the, the environment still looks incredible i love the lighting it yes. looks alive yep and it's so nice to play a game where they're not focused on the destructive environments where everything looks jagged every room is empty mm -hmm. it's just it, it's nice so we it, like the detail yes the detail the trees there's leaves on the trees <laughs> not just green blobs so uh, getting back to some more of the, the mechanics of the game as far as how the, the nano suit works and as far as the secondary weapons and things, they've done a good job. I can't say that I've had the pleasure of playing all them all to see if there's true balance. Mm -hmm. But the players that I've interacted with and the gunfights that I am winning, uh, the, the ones that I expect to win, I am winning. For example, this one right here. Uh, I knew I had to jump on the guy and I went to my secondary and I used speed to my advantage. And I'm really excited about unlocking some more weapons and getting some more attachments to see if I can utilize that rush type game. Absolutely. Now, I, I will say that Crytek, uh, in their development of this game, they, they, obviously they want to keep cloaking available and those types of things. There is a bit of an issue with people camping in corners and just waiting for people to try and shoot them. But you know what I say to that? Every game is going to have that. And if you want to be a camping noob, Go ahead, yeah, sit yeah, in knock the corner yourself all day. out. Have a good time. Uh, and, and you know, mentioning previously about the sci-fi setting, I this is the other thing I do appreciate. I like sci-fi settings, but I also appreciate that the weapons aren't overtly sci-fi in that the the mechanics are unfamiliar. Um, I think this this is going to have a broad appeal because um, you've still got the military style weapons for the most part, from what we've seen up to this point. There, you know, there might, there's probably going to end up being like every other game, uh, a couple of weapons where you're like, "Are you freaking kidding me?" <laughs> well, you like, can't uh, earn an alien weapon in this one, yeah, but if you is, shoot someone down, cool you pick earn. it up, yep, and you can uh, you can take them out with it. Uh, no scopes are possible, people. 
<laughs> Great to see that in there. But I, yeah, why I didn't do you 360 it? Oh, oh my gosh, I could have 360 it. <laughs> so again, going over just the the basics of the game, it was delivered properly. And off my first round of plugging the game in and waiting for the install, I enjoyed a round. Now I was stuck with team deathmatch as much as I hate team deathmatch. Uh, you want to learn the mechanics quickly. But I will say this. The coolest feature in the game is the highlighted kill cams at the end of the round, which show you your best kills. Absolutely. It's totally awesome. Like Everyone knows about the old kill cams in Call of Duty, which, yeah, yeah, they're kind of fun. I, you know, this time... The, there you go. I, and I love this. The bullet time, the bullet follow, the bullet cam is so freaking sweet. It just gives it that, like, nice polished pro look. Um, and it, no one enjoys a kill cam when everyone has to see, you know, the noob in Call of Duty that's sitting in a corner randomly, you know, even though his team's dominating. Target finder. Nothing. Yeah, with a target, <laughs> like whatever. Target finder, I don't even care. But the fact that some guy's sitting there or does like a total flail show, spray and pray and, you know, random just to get the last bullet into a guy where somebody else is legitimately taking him out. I love that this is actually like a highlight package. It's not just a last kill, but it's a highlight package. It's, it's very satisfying. All right, I put one more highlight package on the end. This is a round that I did win and I was kind of happy with uh, some of my sniper kills. So, um, again, guys, give it a whirl. Uh, if you had a chance to play the beta, you were lucky because that really gave you a, a nice preview. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, go get Crisis. And as far as A-Canuck and A-Bomb are concerned, it's a win-win in our eyes. Absolutely. We want to see you guys online, so uh, look us up. Later. Peace.